Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Natter. In this video, we're going to go over generators in JavaScript. This is quite a fancy topic, definitely quite new to the language and less seen out in the wild. It's a way for us to actually create our own iterators um, without actually the crazy fancy syntax that we used to have to do uh, in JavaScript before we had generators. Um, in fact, async and await in JavaScript are actually based on generators uh, behind the scenes. So when we actually take a look at generators, um, we're going to see a lot of examples of what's called a lazy evaluation of code that actually allows us to kind of um, create constructs that are not really possible without working with these concepts of iterators, iterables, as well as generators. So that said, a lot of fancy words and definitions right there. Let's just get right into it to see some examples. Okay, so to start, I'd like to just kind of go over this concept of iterables because everything really relies on this when it comes to uh, talking about generators and generator functions. So an iterable, as we've seen in many other of our previous videos, uh, are things like arrays, strings, sets, and maps, right? They're iterables because we can actually kind of loop through them very easily using things like a for of loop. Right? So we could say like for const item inside of some array, and we could loop through each item in that array. Right? Um, and the reason this works is because these are all iterables or iterators. Okay? And what that is, is a bit kind of beyond the scope of this video, because there used to be, a, or there still is, I should say, an older way to create these um, iterators, which are customized to our own liking for our own objects that are not array string sets and maps, for examples. However, that's kind of given way uh, to a much newer, more succinct, easier to understand uh, syntax, and that is generators, which is what we're going through in this video. So just to kind of recap how that works, this is right a for of loop, right? We've seen this before in the for of loop videos. We can take um, const something of something, and as long as this something here in the orange is an iterator or an iterable, uh, we can kind of loop through it. We can get each value out until we reach the end. Okay, so whether that's five items in an array, for example, or a hundred characters inside of a string, um, or a thousand items inside of a map, we can kind of loop through all of those one at a time and pull them out of that uh, structure. Okay, so what we're gonna see is generators are gonna allow us to create this part right here customized to whatever it is that we want, okay? And this is gonna become uh, very, very useful once we actually need to create uh, our own iterators inside of things like classes or for working with different libraries in the future. In fact, one of the most used um, web development libraries for the backend is called Koa, which is actually uh, built on something called Express, which is one of the probably the more popular first uh, released libraries to actually build out things like APIs on the back end. And when we do get to back end development, we'll kind of see some comparisons of these. But Koa is actually uh, built from the creators of Express and was rebuilt with kind of generators and async await and these concepts in mind to simplify the code make it more easier to read and more manageable and allow some new and interesting functionality and even extra performance that might not have been possible before generators were available in the JavaScript language. So all this talk about generators, what are these fancy generators? Let's take a look. Okay, so quite a bit going on on the slide. I just wanna be um, kind of uh, very deliberate with um, what is actually showing here. Let me just make that, kind of get some of these things out of the way. I just realized that it might be a bit distracting. So right here, we have what looks like almost a regular function declaration. However, you might notice something a bit strange with this, right? And that is that right here, right, on this first line where I'm creating this function, I actually have a star, which is the orange, okay? I'm also using a slightly different syntax from the regular arrow function syntax that we've seen in previous videos that I like to use the most because we can't actually create generator functions with arrow functions. And the reason for that is also beyond the scope of this video. Um, so for now, let's focus on the fact that in order to really create these generator uh, functions, we can create, create them like this, or we can just use a regular function syntax, um, which is without the kind of const at the start, and we can just use function, which we saw in the functions video. However, I'm going to stick with this for now, just to keep it as close to the arrow syntax as possible. Um, so just notice that change there. 
So most importantly is this star, okay? And this star is a syntax that we use to change a regular function into a generator function, very similar to how we tag a regular function with the async keyword to actually turn it into an async function to allow us to use a weight inside of it. We can actually tag a function with a star to tell JavaScript, hey, JavaScript, this is a generator function, and it gives it very special powers. So what are those special powers? Well, you can kind of see in here that we can actually use this new keyword, right? And that's the yield keyword. Now, this looks kind of crazy because we've never seen this before, and it's um, very rare that you actually do see this, but it's really, really powerful. So what we're saying is we are going to yield a value, and we can yield multiple values out of this generator. You can think of this working very similar to a return. However, it's more similar to how an await might work. So it's kind of like combining an await and a return in the sense that the generator function is actually going to pause, return us this value, and if we call it again, we can actually get back the next value. So that sounds kind of crazy, so let's actually look at how this might work. So here we're calling, or creating, sorry, a variable called counter that's pointing at this generator function, okay? And inside this generator function, we just have three yield statements. We're yielding the number one, yielding number two, and then yielding number three. Okay, so what we do then is this is just declaring a function. So very similar to how when we declare a function normally, we actually have to call the function to actually do the stuff inside of it. So the way that generators work is first we need to create a generator object by calling the generator function that creates the generator. Okay, there's a lot of generator, generator, generator in what I'm saying. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense and we'll see a couple of examples in a second. Um, so over here, we're saying call the counter function, which is this generator function. And what we're going to get back is we're going to get back a generator object, which is the one I have highlighted here in kind of this pink um, or red color. And the way that we can pull out values from this generator, once we have the generator object, is by calling the dot next method on that object. So JavaScript automatically provides us a few different um, value or methods, sorry, that we can actually use on these generator objects. And dot next is one of those. Very similar to how a promise has like a dot then method, generators have a dot next method. Okay, and we just call dot next and we get the value extracted back out from the first yield statement. In this case, we're actually getting back, interestingly, an object that has a value prop and a done prop. Okay. The value is going to be the actual value that we yielded, and then done is going to be false. So this might look kind of curious, right? Where did this done come from? Why is it an object? Why don't we just get back the value directly? Um, what is kind of happening here? So I'd like to kind of switch over to code just to show you why this is and why it's so powerful. So I'm just going to pull up VS Code. I'm going to create a new file. I'll call this intro.js, and let's start by creating our generator. So I'll go with the same example just to keep it really simple. And I'll say const counter is equal to a function. And this is a regular function. Okay, now you can notice that I don't have a star anywhere in here. Right. So if I um, let me zoom in a little bit before I zoom back out after we run this, if I try to do a yield inside of here, this is actually not going to work. Right, because I can't do, for example, an await inside um, of a regular function, right? Just like I can't do this, um, I can't do uh, an await either. My editor in this case is not noticing that I can't do this yet um, because I don't think I have the correct extension installed for it to notice that. Uh, but regardless, um, we can't do an await unless this is an async function, right? So if I tag this as async, now I can do await. Similar, we can't use yield unless we're inside a generator function. And to tag a function as generator function, we use the star right after function. Okay, so function star, and then the brackets, and we can put as many parameters in here like normal, and then we can yield values now inside of this generator. So I'm going to yield two, and I'm going to yield three. All right. So just to start and keep things super, super explicit, I'm going to log out counter. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my terminal, make sure I'm in the correct folder, I'm going to run node, and I'm going to run intro.js. And you can see that we have a generator function called counter. Okay, So this is a generator function. To get the generator object itself, 
from this function, we need to actually call the function. So I'm going to call this, um, I'll say const uh, generator, or I'll say counter generator, counter generator is equal to uh, calling our counter um, generator function. Okay. Now, when we call this function, we're not really technically going to be executing too much code. We're just going to be returning an object. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a second. But first, I just want to show you what happens if we log this out. So if I log out this counter generator, I'd like you to think, is this going to be one? Is it going to be two? Is it going to be three? Is it maybe going to be something else entirely? Okay, this is a really challenging question. In fact, I don't actually expect you to know the answer to this because um, we're going to go through it together. So if I run this now, you can see that our first uh, log is happening on line seven. We get the counter, which is a generator function. But most importantly, our counter generator here in line nine, when we try to log it on line 10, is the second log right here. We have an object that's a generator object. Okay, now this is a special object that has very similar to promises, special methods on it that do something very specific. Okay, and this is being constructed for us and returned back to us by the generator function. And I'll show you kind of what it's doing in a second. Now, how do we get out these values, one, two, and three, right? Isn't that the entire point of this? Well, if we say, uh, for example, console.log, I can take my counter generator, right? And I can call the dot next method on it. And I have to call it because it's a function inside of this counter generator, okay? Um, and if I do that, what we'll see is I get back that object that I had on my slide, right? I don't get back one directly. I get back an object that has a value property with the value that's being yielded and a done property, which in this case supposedly is false, whatever that means. Okay, so I want you to look at that object. I'm gonna duplicate this line just a couple more times. All right, so I'm gonna call next, next, next. And hopefully you can see where I'm leading up to, but I want you to think, what are we gonna get logged on these lines? Right, so we saw one and done of false for this first one. What do you think is gonna be the case for 13 and 14? Okay, let's take a look. So um, you can see that we get a value of one done of false, a value of two done of false, and a value of three done of false. Okay, now you're probably thinking, oh, three probably done is true, right? So let me show you something. I'm gonna actually do another next here and then run this one more time and then look at that. Right? So we have one, two, three, done is false, and then we have undefined and then done is true. So what this generator is doing for us is it's giving back an object to us with the values and then a done property to let the to let us really know, or uh, kind of the loop construct that we're using, which we'll see in a second, um, whether it's actually done yielding values or not. Okay. Um, and if done is false, that means that we can expect more yielded values to come after it. If done is true, that means that we've kind of exhausted the generator, right? We've actually pulled out everything possible out of that generator object, which makes sense in this case because we only yielded one, two, and three, and then we're not yielding anything else. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, right? This is pretty, pretty powerful. Um, and just by itself, even this allows us to create um, kind of this iterator object, which we can already start using in things like a for of loop which I'll show you in a second. But before I get back to the slides, I just want to kind of go back to what I was promising earlier. When we actually call this function here on line nine, and we're saying, hey, go create that generator object from the counter function. What we're actually, what's actually happening in JavaScript behind the scenes is it's going to execute this function and it's technically going to pause here, okay? Which is kind of strange. So it's gonna pause here and return the generator. That's really, really what's happening, okay? Um, so it's not actually gonna execute the code really inside of all this, right? And I can prove that to you here, but if I, if I put a console log and I'm saying this is after yield one, right? As soon as I construct this generator object, we're not gonna see this um, log down. So let me show you, right? So I, I've, I've called the function, but we don't see the console log. Because what's happening is the function is actually pausing here. 
right? If I put another console.log here and I say, this is the first log, let's see what happens, okay? It also doesn't get logged out, right? The generator actually pauses on the very, very first line and doesn't execute any code inside the function until after we actually um, call next on it. So if I call next right here, the first time I call next, we can think of it as running from here all the way until yielding of one, okay? We're not gonna see the after yield message. So if I run this, what we'll see is that this is the first log, which is what we see, and then um, the value comes back out because we're constantly logging it, but we don't see this is after yield one. I would have to kind of make the generator go over to the next yield statement in order for it to actually get to this console log. So if I run the, ne the next next, clear this out so you can actually see, um, we'll actually see that this is after the yield one. Okay, that's pretty cool. So literally what's happening is JavaScript is pausing this function and kind of keeping it and its state in memory for it to be executed in the future with future.next. This is totally different behavior from regular functions in JavaScript. If you think about how regular functions work, they will execute from top to bottom and they will never pause, right? They, when we call a function, we can be guaranteed that all the code in that function is gonna run unless there's an error, for example, and it crashes our program. Um, but with await functions, what we saw when we learned about async await is we saw that it actually pauses at the await keywords inside of a function. And we can continue running code kind of out here outside of the um, function itself. Okay, so we can kind of do what looks like multiple things at once, where we have some things paused in the background, and we can run some synchronous code while that code is kind of waiting to be rerun in the future. The nice thing with generators is it basically allows us to do the same thing as a wait. However, in this case, we don't really need to use promises we'll see that we can actually combine promises with this concept to create asynchronous generators, which is a totally wild and amazing concept in the kind of future videos. But now for now, let's just understand the basics of generators by themselves. So here we're pausing, and then we eventually run this code up to here, pause again, run the code up to here, pause again, and then pause again, and then we're done. Okay. Um, you might be curious if we keep calling this generator um, dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next, what actually gets logged out? And you can see that we just keep getting the same value. Once the generator has been exhausted, it is complete. A very similar to once a promise has been settled, so it's been resolved or rejected, it is stuck in that state and it cannot be kind of unstuck. The done property is true. Okay, very cool. So let's go back to our slides. Um, I wanna show you now how this works with a for of loop. So let's take that same example, right? Here's our counter function, which is a generator function yielding one, two, and three. We're gonna construct the generator object itself. Now, what I didn't mention is that this generator object actually also is an iterator, okay? And we know that with an iterator, we can actually loop through it using a for of loop because for of loops work with iterators. So if you look at this code right here, we're saying for each count inside of this generator, log out the count, okay? So we're gonna actually log out one, then two, and then three. So we're gonna be looping through each of these yields one at a time using a for of loop until it's exhausted. So this is where the done property actually becomes useful. If we didn't have a done property, the generator would have no way of knowing when, or sorry, the for of loop would have no way of knowing when to actually stop looping and we'd have an infinite loop. So what the for of loop doing is doing behind the scenes, it's actually looking for that done property. So I just wanna show you kind of two methods that we can actually look at this, um, one using a regular loop and one using a for of loop, just so we can see how it might be constructed. So I'll just come back in here and I'm gonna create a new file. I'll call this loops.js. I'm just going to copy over my counter, uh, as well as the counter creation right here, okay? Just so you don't have to watch me type it all out again. And uh, let me zoom out a bit so that we have a bit more space. Um, and I'm gonna get rid of these console logs as well, just because we saw how that works. So if I run this really quick, what we'll see 
is that we're going to have our generator function and then our generator object. Okay, So we can say for, then we can assign to a const, for example, the count of our counter generator. Now we can't do count of counter because we actually need to construct the generator first and then we can loop over that. Now that might seem kind of odd, but the reason is we can actually create multiple of these um, generators. We can create one, two, three, and each of them actually operates independently and has their own state that can be paused differently depending on where they're at, which is pretty amazing. Okay, so I'll just leave that there for now. Uh, so for each count of counter generator, we want to console.log out that count or that value technically, I guess. So if I run this now, what we'll see is one, two, and three being logged out, and then we are done the program. So if I console.log kind of all done down here, what we'll see is that this is actually synchronous code, right? We're not going to kind of do the thing where we saw an async await where we go off and kind of do some asynchronous stuff, run a bunch of synchronous code and see all done printed first. We're actually going to run all this code synchronously, and then we're going to get down here. So if I run this, we're going to see we actually get one, two, three, and then all done. Okay. So even though I mentioned that the function is technically pausing, in the case of regular generators that are not asynchronous generators, if we're not using await, technically we are pausing, but we're um, able to kind of continue blitzing through all of those values inside of a for of loop synchronously. Okay, pretty, pretty amazing. So I wanna show you what happens if we didn't have a for of loop, right? So how would we do this with a regular loop? So we saw that we can do this. We saw that we can do a console log. I can take my counter generator and I can call next on it, right? So if I do this, we'll see that we get back a value of one and then a done of false, all right? So we can actually use done and the value to, to basically create our own um, loop, right? So let, let, let's take a look at this. So I'll say let value equal to counter generator dot next and i'm just going to console dot log out the value but i'm only going to log out the value while the actual maybe i should probably name this something different i'll call this the um counter object so while the counter objects oops while the counter objects done property is false, we want to continue looping in a while loop, right? So while counter object dot done is false, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to, we want to log out counter object value, right? So we're going to say counter object dot value. Okay, let's see what happens if we run this code. So I'm going to run node loops and then we get a one, 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 right? So Oh, I got a <laughs> control C to get out of that. Um, and the reason is that we never incremented or moved to the next value in our counter generator, right? I never called next again. So it's permanently stuck on one for the value and done being false. Okay. So if I console.log out this counter object, what we'll see, I'll just come this out, it's still going to be an infinite loop, is one is uh, the value and done is false, right? That was an infinite loop. It just was running behind the scenes with no logs. So I still had to close it myself. So what we want to do is we want to log out the value, but then we want to also move to the next um, thing inside of our generator. So I can call uh, counter object dot next, but then I want to assign that back to counter object. So I'm going to say counter object is equal to the next value now. So what this is going to do is we're going to create our counter object and we're going to grab this first value, which is what we're logging out. We're going to say, is it's done property false? Yes, it is. It's false, right? So it's not done yet. Then we're going to log out the value. Then we're going to move to the next item inside of our generator. And we're going to get back another object that looks like this. But this time we're going to yield two as a value and done is also going to be false because we're not done the generator. Okay. So what I'll do here is also console.log out the counter object just so that we can see that as it kind of progresses. I also just realized that I actually 
have my code a bit wrong here. So we don't actually want to progress counter object. We want to progress counter generator.next. Hopefully you caught that. Uh, but if not, then that's what we want to do before we run this. Uh, because counter object itself is going to be this object right here. Um, what, we, what we're saying here is we want to uh, progress the generator, right? Um, which is this thing right, um, sorry, this thing right here, um, which is a, our version of one um, of these counter generators, right? If we had another one, we would say counter generator 2.next. So we're, we have a counter generator and the generator object is the one that is keeping track of the state that we're in so that it knows which yield statement that we're at and kind of any other code up here that we might have run or not run or variable states and things like that. So we want to make sure that our counter object that we're looking at right now, which is this values done is false. And as long as that's false, we can print out the value, but then we want to progress the actual generator object itself, um, which is our counter generator. So let's see what happens if we run this code now. Uh, so what we want to see is we want to see that all of these values get yielded out and printed with our while loop. And we are manually progressing the generator using dot next. And we are also manually checking the done property to see if it's true or false. And eventually, once we do have it be true, which means done is true, then we're going to uh, come out here and we're going to see all done. So fingers crossed, let's run this code and check it out. There it is. So what we have is value one done or false. We're, we're printing out the counter object value, which is right here, the one. And then we're printing out the next counter object before we loop through again, right? So now we're asking is done false right here. Um, and it is false, right? We, we just, we see it right here. That's false, but the value is now two. So we print out two. Then we progress it one more time. Now done is still false. So then we print out um, the value inside of there, which is three. Then we progress it one last time. Um, and then now done is true and the value is undefined. But since done is true, we never enter this function again, or sorry, this loop again. So we never actually print out undefined. We just immediately leave that loop and come down here and run the rest of our code. Okay, so definitely pretty cool. Um, very, very powerful. Take some getting used to because there's a lot of stuff happening here. Um, we can actually use these in multiple ways, as you saw with the for of loop, or we can use um, the while loop. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that in this case, if I was to bring this back, for example, let's say I try to use my counter generator up here, um, and then I try to kind of do this stuff down here, um, what we'll see if I try to run this is that we actually don't loop through it a second time, right? And that's because if you see right here on line 19, it should be, I'm actually logging the value of our counter object after calling dot next on it, and that's undefined as a value and done is true already. And that's because once we have our generator created, its state is stuck, right? I'm very similar to how a promise, as I mentioned, gets stuck in a settled state. It's done. We can't change it to resolved or rejected once it's one or the other. Uh, it's permanently resolved or rejected. Same thing with a counter or sorry, with a generator. Um, we can only get uh, through it one time. And once we've exhausted all the options, it's done. Right? We, can't, we have to create another generator object using the generator function to actually loop through it again. And this is a very useful property, even though right now it actually seems limiting because we can be guaranteed that we um, are kind of at only one part in this function at any given time. And we're not actually trying to run it multiple times with multiple different states all over the place. Okay. However, if we did create a second one right here, uh, we actually would be able to have two different versions of states going at different times if we wanted to, but that's because they're two separate objects. Okay, let's head back to our slides. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, and you're probably curious about this, is this is a new keyword, right? Yield is a new keyword for us. Do we have a return in a function? And it turns out we do, right? And return in a generator function actually um, kind of functions very similar sort of to a return in a regular function. Um, however, it has a caveat that it just stops the iteration um, immediately. So we cannot yield values once we have returned from a generator because what that does, it sticks it into a done state. Okay, so um, let me actually show you that. So I'm actually going to copy this code right here again, my counter as well as creating the counter object just so we have too much code on one, sc on one screen. I'll do a return.js, paste it in here. And what I wanna show you is that if I actually say put a return here, 
right? Um, you see my editor grays this out because it's smart enough to know in this case, for some reason, I uh, didn't know that yields could not be used outside, or it was able to be used outside of a generator function, but it's fine. Um, so let's do a for const value of counter generator. And I want to console.log out that value. So what we want to see now is like, are we going to get to this three, right? Or is it just going to be one and two, right? So let's, let's take a look. So I'll run a node and then this is going to be return.js. And it looks like we just get one and two, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now that you've kind of seen a couple of these examples, um, hopefully you can kind of intuit that once we return, we're just, we're just done, right? Um, and if I was to log out this generator down here again, right, we would see it that it's in a done state. Oops, sorry, I want to log out the uh, counter generator dot next here. We'll see that it's in a done state. Okay, so its value is undefined and done is true. It does not ever reach this yield of three. Um, and we uh, are just permanently done this generator. Okay, and if we try to loop over this again, just like we saw previously, it would not work because done is true. So return is to stop the iteration. Um, however, most of the time we're actually just going to constantly yield. And that leads us to this next topic, which is probably one of my favorite things about generators and one of the more powerful ideas behind it. This is something that I have been uh, itching to show you uh, when it comes to generators and it's super amazing also with async generators when we get to them. And this is not possible with regular JavaScript code, technically with iterators. However, this is a much neater syntax. So check this out. Here we have our same counter generator function. I'm creating a variable called i starting it at zero. Then I'm creating an infinite loop while true. This is always going to be true. This is going to loop forever. It's never going to stop unless I use a break, but there's no break in here. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm yielding i. Then I'm doing an i plus plus. Okay. So I'm going to code this in a second and show you what this does. But I want you to think. What might this do? What's the purpose of this generator function? Okay, so I'm going to go back to VS Code. I'll just do a, a new file. I'll call this infinite.js. Um, I'll do a const counter and I'll just write this out one more time. This is a function star and then uh, the function syntax, right? So instead of an error function, we have to use this function syntax. I'll write this out because the code for this is different. So I'm going to say let i equals zero. This is going to be our counter. We're going to create an infinite loop and then we're going to yield i. Okay. And then we're going to make i go up by one. i plus plus. Okay. So i plus equals one. All right. So pretty simple function. Okay, I'm going to clear this console here. I'm going to create my const counter um, generator is equal to calling our counter. And then I'm going to create a for all loop. I'm going to say for const value of counter generator. And I'm going to console.log out that value. All right. So I'd like you to think again one last time. And now that you've seen the code, right, what might this do? All right. So I'm going to run node. I'm going to run infinite.js. And oh my goodness, right? Uh, my computer is going to be very unhappy and you can see that it is actually an infinite loop. It never ever finishes and we are generating numbers um, starting at zero and going up by one um, infinitely, nonstop. Okay, so um, this is pretty neat. It's kind of like, why is this useful matter? You know, I could create a regular while loop that, you know, generates a bunch of numbers infinitely and just makes them go up by one. Um, but what's interesting about this is that technically speaking, um, I could, for example, stop this at a particular time if I wanted to, or I could control when to stop this outside of this generator. So let me show you what I mean. Um, let me comment out this for of loop and let me create a, uh, a while loop, for example. So I'll start a counter. So I'll say, let, um, count equal zero. And then I'll say, while my count is less than, let's say I want five numbers. Okay, I can then console.log out my counter generator dot next. All right, so what is this going to do? I'd like you to compare this code to this code and try to think what might the difference be. And I just realized 
that I also have to do a count plus plus, otherwise this would actually be the same thing. Um, what is this code gonna do? All right, let's take a look. So I'm gonna run this and check it out, right? We are able to pull values out of this generator infinitely um, and done is never gonna be true. Okay, never gonna be true, which is pretty kind of crazy, right? Um, so this is technically um, infinite amount of values for us to play with and we can kind of decide how many we actually want to pull out. Now there are many, many uses for this. And in this case, we had to kind of control it manually. Um, but what we're going to see is that this concept combined with other concepts is actually super, super powerful um, when it comes to generators and iterators in JavaScript. Okay. So uh, in this case, I just want to mention one more time, this is a concept called lazy evaluation. And this is probably one of the most important things to realize. What we could have technically done is created an array that had a bunch of numbers in it, right? I could definitely create an array even using a loop that has maybe a million numbers in it. But I can also create a generator that's going to generate infinite amount of values, or let's say a million different values for me. The difference between those two is that when I create an array in JavaScript, that entire array has to be stored in memory somewhere because those are solid values, primitive values that are that take up space in our computer's RAM or our computer's memory. These generators, however, run lazily. They run when we call next. If you think about how this works, we actually don't generate the next value until we call next again. So we actually don't even go into the loop until we call next, right? So we technically don't waste any time running any code until we actually call next, which is when we really need the value. So in theory, this is an infinite amount of values in almost no space at all, which is pretty crazy if you really think about it, right? So just to reiterate that, the amount of memory required to store this is so small, right? Almost non-existent in modern standards. We can pull out an infinite number of values, very similar to an infinite array, using a generator, but without the space constraints. Okay, pretty, pretty cool. I'm gonna mention um, a little bit more about Koa towards the end and how they use it, which is also pretty cool, but I wanna show you one more thing. So just to kind of, uh, for sake of completion, uh, I wanna show you how we can do what's called yield delegation. Now this syntax is kind of funky looking, so let's go through it really quick. Here we have a generator function called counter, right? And you can see that we're yielding values out of counter, just like we did earlier. However, here we have a new syntax, which is a yield star. And this is allowing us to give it an iterator right after the yield star, which is actually going to pass generation to that iterator before it comes back into the generator that we're currently in. So that sounds totally crazy. So let me show you an example. I'll just create another file. I'll call this delegation.js. I'm going to create my counter example just for sake of consistency function. There we go. So I'm going to yield some values out of here. I'm going to yield one. Then I'm going to yield three, or actually, what was it? Five down here. But in between, I'm going to yield star, and then I'm going to give it an iterable. This has to be an iterable. This can be another generated a generator object. It can be a, a map. It can be anything that's an iterable. In this case, I'm going to give it an array, which also is an iterable, as we saw in the first slide. I'm going to give it two, three, and four. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll kind of uh, const and I'll say generator object is equal to calling our counter. Then I'll say for const value of our generator object, I want to console.log out that value. Now I'd like you to think, what do you think might be printed out in this case? We are delegating this array as the iterable for the yield, um, kind of similar to how a generator would work. All right, so let's take a look. So we're gonna run node delegation.js and check that out, right? We get one, two, three, four, and five. 
So this, um, I've never been so excited to say one, two, three, four, and five. Um, but what's actually happening here is we are kind of running through this as if it's a generator and yielding each value in the iterator one at a time. Very similar to how if I was to do four const value of, and then I said two, three, and four, and then I console.load out that value, right? If you think about this, I am going to go through two, then three, and then four, right? So the same is true here. We are delegating the generator to this iterable, and then it's going to come back to itself and then yield future values in itself. So this can be any iterable, including another generator, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so to kind of wrap this video up, I just want to mention that this is a very, very complex and advanced topic. In fact, I actually only showed you technically half of how generators work, because the other half is actually we can provide values as an input into generators. Um, but in the exercises which we're going to go through next, I'm going to show you some practical examples of how we can actually use generators. And as we build more complicated projects together, we can actually build our own iterators using generators inside of things like classes and objects to make iterating through them really, really simple. Now, Koa, which is a uh, JavaScript library or framework for actually building uh, backend web applications, uses generators behind the scenes. It was created by the creators of Express, who actually created Express before generators and things like async await were even in the JavaScript language. Um, so they weren't, weren't able to use those when they created that framework. So for Express, it's a wonderful framework. In fact, I'll probably create a bunch of videos on it um, because it's one of the more popular backend frameworks in Node.js to build uh, APIs. Um, they actually created Koa, which uses generators to actually make the code much more readable, much easier to use, both for the people developing the framework as well as the end users, like developers like us who just want to build web applications and do things like respond to API requests. So all that might sound like a bunch of gobbledygook right now, but generators are adding a lot of really fancy and advanced and easier to understand features than we had previously when we were stuck with basic iterators, um, which is what most languages actually have. So this is quite a new uh, feature in the language. We're, we're not going to see it pop up everywhere. However, I'll definitely point out cases where we are going to be able to take advantage of it to create our own iterators. And when I show you async iterators as well, after we do exercises for this video, it's probably going to be one of the most mind blowing concepts that we're going to look at when we look at JavaScript together. So I hope that video was valuable. I know it was all over the place and a little bit giddy with excitement to show you this, but hopefully that was okay. Um, I'd love it if you could uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you did appreciate this video. I'd love to hear in the comments, do you see these generators show up when you're writing code? Um, how do you feel about kind of using these? Do you ever think of uh, maybe a use case for yourself or maybe you've written some code uh, where you thought maybe a generator might actually be a, a better substitute for it? Um, and it, don't worry if not, we're actually going to see a lot of examples as I mentioned in the projects in the future where we're going to be able to use this and it's going to kind of be pretty mind blowing. Super excited to get to the exercises for this concept. So I'll just see you right there.